What's going on guys? So this is going to be interesting. The folks from eTrailer sent me an email several days ago saying that I was going to receive a surprise package in the mail that I should unbox on camera because they thought I might get a kick out of it. So this package arrived. It actually arrived yesterday. Um, it's relatively thin. At first, I'm thinking it's some type of a sign. I kind of figured it was a solar panel, but it was a little thin for that. And, you know, the, the email they sent me doesn't necessarily kind of, you know, the tone doesn't match up to if it were something like a solar panel. So we're going to unbox this thing, see what it is. Um, I don't even have the slightest suspicion of what it could be. So hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, so I got my wife here next to me. Do you have any idea what you think this thing could be? Like, any ideas at all? I think it's, honestly, I think that's gonna be a picture or some kind of a photo frame. Sorry, it's gonna be a picture of your 500,000 subscriber, like a congratulations, maybe? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, right? I, I really didn't think about that. Set my plaque that goes on the wall, maybe? I don't know. That's actually a good one because they've been wanting to do something to kind of celebrate that, so. I don't know. I have a feeling it's going to be some type of a funny picture that they somehow randomly took of me while I was at their facility a couple months ago. I don't know. But it's going to be interesting, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull this thing out and see what it looks like or what it is. So I already cut the top open just so I could easily access it for this part of it, but I have not looked inside of here yet. So I just used a small knife, cut the top open so it'd be easy to unpack. So I can already tell by looking at the top of it, it's corrugated. So mm -hmm. my wife's probably more accurate with this than I am because she said it's some type of a sign. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. uh oh, I see legs. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not your shoes, so I know it's not you. Okay, so we got something going on, buddy. What do you think it is? <laughs> Buddy's already curious and it pops out. Oh my God. What in the world is this? <laughs> I know what this is. It's Jake. Oh, okay, let's see. Hey, Jake. So never met you before, but uh, there you are. <laughs> yeah. So this is Jake, the six foot five tall guy. So let me let me get the camera backed up a little bit to see all six foot five inches of this dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, but it's just a poster. So that's Buddy taking a look at it, getting freaked out. That's <laughs> actually hilarious. Okay. Who is it, Buddy? Who is it? It's okay, Who's baby. It? <laughs> he wouldn't leave my side though. He just kept barking. <laughs> yeah. Buddy's turned into quite the uh, quite it's the guard okay. dog. It's just a poster of Jake. <laughs> it's a Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Just down. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Just a poster. I think you realize now. Okay. This guy's not moving. This is hilarious. This is uh, absolutely hilarious. So how tall is Jake? So Jake is six foot five. Okay. So that is so yeah. cool. Let me get this thing set up and then we'll be right back. So this is my surprise. All six foot five feet of Jake, now just kind of standing in the middle of the cabin. Interesting. And if you wanna see how tall six foot five is, here's a threshold right here. That's, so that's seven feet tall. That's kind of hilarious. So yeah, big shout out to the folks at eTrailer and to Jake for uh, I guess offering to do this. It's kind of awkward, I'm not gonna lie. I am gonna probably use this in the new garage when it goes up uh, as a way of demonstrating how tall things are or just to scare folks who come into the cabin. Imagine like this being at the front door when you know we open the front door. I'll feel safer now when you're not here. I'll just pretend I have someone here to protect me. This conversation just got really awkward. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, hey Jake, welcome to the cabin. Okay, so. My dad's showing me something special he did on his 2001 Nissan Frontier. This is a supercharged engine. Big supercharger up here. However, 
he has bypassed the supercharger because the supercharger hasn't been working. So he got a belt that is a little bit smaller, doesn't have to reach up over the supercharger. And now this is a normally aspirated engine versus a supercharged engine, which is kind of cool. So what did you do? Well, what I had to do was this one radiator hose here is a little closer than I was comfortable with, with the pulley. I had to change this to a groove pulley instead of a flat pulley because of the side of the belt that it rolls on now. Normally with the supercharger, it would come the, around the right side of this pulley, up and over the supercharger and back under this idler. So what I had to do is I changed this out to a groove belt. I moved this pulley in about two inches to take it further away from that hose and that way uh, I have it's properly a grooved belt riding on a grooved pulley still using the idler in its normal function. I've just eliminated the supercharger pulley under this hood and uh, what that does is it allows me to run regular gas. The supercharger connected doesn't feel much different at all. Normal driving, not an aggressive driver so I don't need the performance and the savings in being able to use regular gas uh, the truck runs as well, if not better, because you've taken this load off the engine. It only The supercharger only increased the power by about 30 horsepower, and uh, it was not noticeable driving. So I'm happy with the setup now. I've moved the belt about a half an inch or more away from this hose, and uh, I'm not as nervous about it possibly contacting the hose anymore. Yep, and, and the point here wasn't to not use the supercharger. The supercharger had some mechanical issues with it. So by doing this, he bypassed the need to completely rebuild the supercharger, which he actually did, but then he found out there were some areas that you really couldn't access that needed to be fixed as well. So it was really buying a new supercharger or doing it this way, and with the performance and what you're looking for out of this truck, you didn't need to use the supercharger. Pretty cool, and it's pretty cool what you're able to do down here. So, he's a he's a bona fide mechanic in the sense that he loves tinkering with things, and uh, I could tell you guys tons of stories of growing up working on old Pontiacs and other vehicles in the garage. Anyways, guys, figured you might want to see this as well. But yeah, we got an interesting thing going on. So when he bought this truck or traded in for it, he used it as just pretty much a beater truck, uh, something that he could just drive around do some truck stuff with without needing to get a full size truck. It had a Viper alarm that was installed in it. It's actually right here and there's a period of time in my life when I was an installer for alarms and all sorts of other stuff I was actually a certified MECP installer and at the time and I don't even know if things have changed this has been like <laughs> over 20 years ago MECP stood for mobile electronic certified professional if you wanted to work for companies like Circuit City if you guys remember them Best Buy and all that they required that you be MECP certified to do it and not only did I do it I also trained others on how to do it but this, uh, this alarm system is installed in a very interesting way, and the whole reason why I'm pointing this out is because they did some things correctly, and when I started to remove this system because it's not working and the remotes are no longer programmed and it's doing some kind of funky things, I was noticing something, and you know this is something to be very cautious of if you ever get stuff professionally installed or professionally installed. And that is some of the wiring under here, from the surface it looked like it was done correctly. Um, I don't like seeing butt connectors. This is something that's certainly not approved if you're gonna be a professional installer. Typically what you're gonna do is you're gonna strip the wire, pull it back, split it, run your new wire or the wire that you're gonna be uh, teeing into it through the split and then you're gonna twist it around and solder it. And it looked like that's what they had done here. When you see electrical tape under the dash, that's actually a good thing. This is usually not a good thing. If you're a professional installer, butt connectors are a big no-no. Not only because they create resistance, but also because you may not get a perfect crimp and there are other issues that can happen. So we typically would never use butt connectors. What we would do again, we'd strip the wire, we'd spread it apart, we'd poke through the center of it, split it, put your wire through, and then you kind of tee the wire off and or pigtail the wire and wrap it around each side, solder it, tape it back up with 3M33 plus electrical tape and you're good to go. Um, and it looked like they had done that. And I'm getting under here, I'm starting to pull some of these wires loose. But then quickly what I realized is they had done the cor correct process of splitting it, making the hole in the center, feeding the wire through, but they never soldered it. It's all just loose. They just twisted it around and they, they retaped everything, which is a big, big, big no-no. And it had me thinking, how many installers probably do that? You know, you, you go, you pay a lot of money to have a remote start system added to your vehicle. These systems can cost upwards of $1,000 to have installed inside of your vehicle. They are very, very 
wire intensive. You got tons and tons of wires that have to be spliced into, uh, cut into, wired into, all sorts of different connections that have to be made under here. In some cases, upwards of like 30 or 40 connections. And, you know, you pay a lot of money just hoping that it was done right. And then you find something like this. My theory is, is that there was probably a cheaper alarm system that was in this vehicle at one point, and whoever they took the vehicle to installed this relatively expensive Viper system with remote start in, but instead of removing the old system, they just cut into it, spliced the new connections into it. But this is the part that still confuses me. Why would these original connections up here be literally just wound around and not soldered? So, you know, it had me again thinking, are there shops that do a lot of this that you take it to and, and they do about 50% of the effort correctly, but then the other 50% they just absolutely ignore and they don't wire things upright. They don't solder things correctly. They just leave it, you know, in a very, very, I guess what I would consider to be unfinished uh, state. And, you know, this to me is very dangerous. So I'm glad we caught this. I'm glad we're removing it. Uh, this is just something that, that, I've, I've honestly never seen this before. I've never seen somebody go through the effort of splitting the wire, getting it prepped, but then not soldering it. They just twist the wire around there. I could see folks using butt connectors. I mean, shoot, I use butt connectors, but you know, I can't really see somebody going through the effort of doing what you're supposed to do and then just stopping right before you, you solder it. But again, I have a feeling that that's probably more common in the industry and people do this. Anyways, we're gonna keep working at this, trying to remove it. I got about eh, maybe 20% of it removed. The rest of it, I gotta fish all the wires back and just make sure that uh, that we don't have any connections going to anything that that I need to need to be sure to to cut off or cap. Anyways, just wanted to give you an update on what's going on here. We're gonna finish this project up hopefully pretty soon.